Hello there, this video will go over how to do the base install for Linux on a Chromebook, which will result in us getting a terminal. This will bring us closer to having a Linux desktop on a Chromebook. If you are interested in Linux on a Chromebook, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on a Chromebook without running. To install Linux, we need to go to Chromebook settings, and from the list on the left side, we are going to click on the advanced pull-down, and then we are going to click on developers. This will bring us to the developers section. Here we should see a turn on button next to Linux development environments. If you don't see this option, then unfortunately your Chromebook isn't able to add Linux. If you do see this option though, then we are going to go ahead and click on the turn on button. Note that Chromebooks in the store tend to be in store mode and usually don't show the Linux development environment option even if the Chromebook is able to add Linux. So here I am showing a web page from the Chromium website that I have linked in the description that lists all the devices that were launched before 2019 that support Linux on Chrome OS. According to that same page, it says that all devices launched in 2019 or later support Linux on Chrome OS unless otherwise specified. This will bring up the Setup Linux Development Environment window. From here, we can click on the Next button where we can then set the username and disk size. The disk size is the amount of storage being taken from the Chromebook side and being set aside for Linux. Now we can select a custom disk size if we would like. Keep in mind though that we can adjust the disk size at any time in settings. When we are done setting the username and disk size, we are going to want to make sure we are online because now we are going to click on the install button. The install should just take a couple of minutes. For context, we are going to be running Google's custom Debian Linux container called Penguin inside the Termina virtual machine, which runs under Chrome OS. In short, we are not modifying or running Chrome OS itself. We are simply running a Linux container on top of Chrome OS. Since that's the case, Linux can be removed at any time in Chromebook settings if we go to Advanced, Developers, Linux Development Environment, and click on the Remove button. Removing Linux will remove Termina, the Linux container, and any files inside the Linux container. Files inside the Linux container can be moved to the Chrome OS side using the Chrome OS files application. It's generally good practice to copy the files outside the container. In a future video, I'll go into more detail about files. When the install is complete, the terminal app will open. The first thing we can do is pin the terminal app to the bottom shelf of our Chromebook. We can do that by right-clicking on the terminal app and selecting pin. Note that a right-click on a Chromebook is a two-finger click on the mouse pad. Now, whether or not the terminal app is open, it'll stay on the bottom shelf. In order to properly shut down Linux, we have to right-click on the terminal app in the bottom shelf and select Shut Down Linux. After that, we can then close out of the terminal window. To start Linux back up, we just click on the terminal app, select Penguin, and then wait for the terminal to finish starting up. Now we can bring up terminal settings by either right-clicking on the terminal app from the bottom shelf and selecting settings, or we can do Control shift p on our keyboard. Here we can choose the terminal theme, background, font size, and make other various configurations. Now if you would like to temporarily adjust the font size, we can do so by either doing Control plus to increase the font size, or Control dash to decrease the font size. Now we are going to disable the improved keyboard shortcuts. To do that, we need to go to the Chrome browser and input the URL chrome colon slash slash flags. From there, we need to search for improved keyboard shortcuts. Now, if the pull-down next to the flag is not already disabled, then we need to click on the pull-down and select disabled. After that, we need to click on the restart button that pops up so that the Chromebook restarts and the change takes effect. This should now make it so that from the search1 to search equal sign key combinations act as the F1 through F12 keys. 
If the key combinations for the function keys change, I will update it in the comments. Now we are going to make one more configuration before we go ahead and use the terminal, which is adjusting the keyboard repeat rate. The repeat rate is controlled by the Chrome side, so adjusting the repeat rate on the Chrome side will affect the repeat rate on the Linux side. The repeat rate determines how fast a key press on a keyboard will repeat. To adjust the repeat rate, we need to go to Chromebook settings, and in the device section, we are going to click on keyboard. From there, we can scroll down to the press and hold to automatically repeat the key section, where we can adjust the repeat rate to whatever we would like. Here I am showing an example of before and after adjusting the keyboard repeat rate. We can now finally get to using the terminal. First up, it's good practice to set the password for both the user ID and the root user. We can get the user ID by typing who am I into the command line with no spaces between the words. To execute a command in a terminal, we simply press on the enter key. We'll notice that the result of the who am I command is the same name that's behind the at penguin. Keep in mind that Linux is case sensitive, so if we're stuck in caps lock and try to execute the same who am I command we just did, it'll tell us command not found. To toggle caps lock on and off, we can do alt search on our keyboard. For a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts for our Chromebook, we can go to the keyboard shortcuts application on the Chromebook, or we can do search control S on our keyboard instead. Now that we know the user ID, we can set the password for the user ID. To do that, we need to type in sudo space passwd space the user ID. When we execute the command, we can type in the new password. When we're done typing in the new password, we need to press enter and retype the password again. After we're done retyping the password, we can press enter once more to confirm the new password for the user ID. If we mess up typing the new password for the user ID, that is not a problem because we can press the up arrow key to get the previous command and try again. For reference, if we press the up arrow key, it'll give us previous commands from most recent to least recent. Also, if we do history in the terminal, it'll give us a full list of all the previous commands we've done. Now to set the password for the root user, we do sudo space passwd space root. This will allow us to type in the new password where we will have to retype it again to confirm the new password. Again, if we mess up typing the password, we can just repeat the command and try again. To get more information or documentation about a command, we can usually do man space the command. Man stands for manual. For example, if we do man space passwd, we will get documentation about the password command that we used earlier. To scroll up and down through a man page, we use the up and down arrow keys, and then to exit a man page, we just use the Q key. If you're ever curious about what language you're using in a terminal, we can do echo space dollar sign zero. For this example, we get bash. Better yet, we can do man space bash to get more documentation about the bash language. Now, if we open up the terminal and we get some kind of error, this can usually be fixed by right-clicking on the terminal app in the bottom shelf, select shut down Linux, close out of the terminal window, shut down the Chromebook, restart the Chromebook, put the Chromebook online, open up the terminal app again, select Penguin, and then let the terminal finish starting up. I will be making a future video that will go over more detailed methods on fixing issues related to the terminal starting up. But again, shutting down everything and then restarting the Chromebook with it being online and starting up Linux again will generally fix the issue. Lastly, I would like to emphasize that you do not have to be afraid of the command line because you would have to know the exact command and you would have to type it in 100% correctly in order to mess anything up. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, The Chromebook Guide to Google Linux. And other than that, 
See you soon.